Hey everybody! Today Rado runs through Undaunted 2200 Callisto. But before we begin, please turn on your subtitles to the Klingon channel so that when I have an oops moment, you'll know about it. Hey everybody, Kimberly here, and I am super excited to share with you Undaunted 2200 Callisto. So this is set in the future, and there are, yes, two factions here. You've got one, which is the LFA. This is the Lunar Frontier Authority. And we are on Callisto, Jupiter's moon, thanks to NASA and all the exploratory technology available to us in the future. And the other faction is the Breakers, and the Breakers are the miners and the drillers and the workers who are trying to mine resources from Callisto. And yeah, LFA is essentially that organization that is probably putting a little bit too much pressure on these folks. And yes, things have come to a head. This is this is essentially the two sides who are going to duke it out for these resources. I've got everything out here and I am going to be playing LFA. If you see colors, blue, that's going to be LFA. You see their marker right here um, and you're going to see that all their cards are going to have that blue color. Over here, yellow, this is going to be Lewis. Um, we played through the scenarios, which there are eight of in this 2200 Callisto. And I've actually got this set up for scenario two. Now you can play any of the scenarios at any time in this game, but it does follow a flow of starting with one and then it grows and changes and adapts. And there is this rich story that goes along with it. And so in the very first scenario, things are quite basic. And I would say we start off with our basic cards and we have very few um, new bits and new pieces. And so what I wanted to do was start with two because we're going to get some new units and some new features, including bridges and uh, also some mechs. And so I just really think that this showcases more of what the game offers and I'll talk more about that in my final thoughts. Also, final thoughts and note, if you want to jump ahead to the final thoughts, you can use that chapter system here in YouTube. There's also going to be that link. You could just click right on the timestamp and it'll take you straight to final thoughts if that's what you're interested in. So let's jump into my run through. Like I said, I'm over here playing LFA. I've got Lewis over here playing the breakers. I've done all the basic setup for the scenario and you'll see here that the goal for each of us is going to be control seven objective points or neutralize three of the opponent's units. Now I will say here, if you can read this, there is a misprint on the board. It should say seven for both. And the reason is, is because right down here you can see there's this uh, symbol right here for control points. And I begin with four control points and this is my control marker. And over here, Lewis has two, and then he's got two for this one as well. And this is the control symbol. So if I take this over here and show you, that means this is control, and that means essentially scout or presence. And so control means an action that you actually start to control this, this space as long as there isn't an opponent, opponent's unit there. Okay, so there are some spaces we've scouted. This is going to be the scout symbol that you see out here. And we begin in these two different spaces. And these are going to be the cards or the units that we can add to our deck. And we have a deck that has a variety of uh, cards in there so that we're going to have our units, we're going to have our commanders, and we're going to have some interference, much like Fog of War. Now we have interference. So let's just get started. I'm going to do a quick shuffle on our decks just to make sure that they are all good and shuffled. And then each of us draws four. So I'm going to draw four cards here and put that down. I'm going to do the same thing over here with Lewis's cards and the breaker. Now this is a simultaneous card selection. He's going to draw four and we're going to look at our cards. Now the game begins with, as it says here, starting initiative is going to be the breakers. So Lewis is going to go first. And the way that I'm going to do this, because I'll be looking at both, both decks, both hands, I'm always just going to look at the person who has initiative first, make that player's decision, and then I'll go to the other hand, look at that. And what we're doing is we're looking at our four cards and we are going to select one of them to be our initiative. And that means that we are not playing with that 
that unit, this turn, we are putting them essentially face down. When we both have a face down card, we flip it over and we're going to be looking at the number in that top left corner. And whoever has the highest number gets to go first in that round. If there's a tie, tie goes to the existing holder of the initiative marker. So that could be really great for the person who, who holds it uh, at the time, which is a fantastic opportunity. So we're looking at these cards and I'm looking at Lewis's cards going, he's got a blaster and a hewer that are both A units. And what that means is this could be a really nice push with one particular flank. And this is going to be a very tactical game, gaining ground and possibly gaining those seven uh, objective points. There were only three available. There's one here, there's one down here, and there's one all the way over here, and they each have one. So one person could nab all three of those, which is highly unlikely <laughs> without a fight. So that means that we are going to be moving into each other's spaces and having that really, really close combat inside the same space for control so that we can gain that. And in the meantime, we might be neutralizing units, which essentially means that we are taking their entire disc off the map. And these discs represent units of which you might have several cards to match. So we've got Supervisor. This is a really great one. And I'm gonna play exactly the way that Lewis plays. Um, so Lewis loves to bolster. And I'm, I'm just gonna say, he wants to keep this. He doesn't wanna play um, Rosé Yolanda as a nine initiative in the very first round and waste the opportunity to gain three more cards to his hand. Um, he even says at some point, <laughs> every single game that we play, I think I've over bolstered. I think I bolster too much. So we're gonna just keep that. We're gonna do that. So he's actually with the idea that he's going to break ties, he's gonna play this interference card and one of the reasons he's gonna play that is because he can't actually get rid of it. There is a card that has a keyword that says recon, and there's no recon on these cards here, so he's not gonna be able to get rid of this card from his hand, and yes, it just junks up your hand. So he's gonna place this, uh, we're gonna put the card up here, he's gonna place that face down, and he's going to do some fantastic things with bolstering, and then he's going to do some fantastic stuff with his A unit over here. He's got a couple of those A cards. So. Now it's me. I look at my hand and it looks like I've got a sergeant and two commanders and then a corsac. Okay, so I've got my commander here and that is going to help bolster that particular unit. So all my units have a letter and then I've got my cards over here. So I've got my Y's, I've got my Z's, and then I've got my H's and my V's. And my H and V's are going to uh, be associated with my mechs. And my mechs can't go in these spaces that say no mechs. It's like that kind of like no smoking sign. You can't, you can't go in there with your mechs. You have to stay up on these elevated platforms because down here is the only place where um, essentially these units can go, which are your personnel. So of all of these cards, I've got two commanders that might help me bolster. They might actually help me move those units so that I can actually get closer to getting on those bridges and really moving, moving forward with that. I mean, I need to get my navigator and gunner so I can actually start really, you know, putting some pressure on Lewis. So I'm thinking of keeping those. Now, Corsac Y is over here, this unit, and they can jump down in here and then jump over here. I say jump, but I mean, we're going down in elevation into the under space, but it's still a, a, a space that's um, adjacent to where my number one space begins. And they can maybe come over here and get some protection. There's a defense. And there's also going to be that point that I want towards uh, controlling my objective points. So that's good. And then Z is over here and it's my Sergeant Z, which lets me bolster or inspire. Now, inspire only is uh, available if you have another Z that you have activated that round, but I could also bolster. But if I bolster and bolster and bolster, then that's a lot of cards I'm adding to my hand at first instead of moving out. And I wanna put a little bit of pressure on Lewis. I think that maybe acting first and kind of going on the offensive is, going to be my strategy here. I want to I want to get out there and I want to kind of get the take the advantage of 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 the situation. Cuz I don't know what he's doing. 
but I really do feel like I'm going to have to do something here. Okay, Corsac Y, am I going to am I going to move you and then get you into place? I feel like I want to. Now my commanders, oh boy, bolster Z. So if I bolster Z, I could get some of these some of these guys. I can get another Corsac, I could get a stalker, and I oh my gosh, scouting is brilliant for stalkers. This is a tough choice. So what I think I might do is Let's just see here. I'm going to keep Hades here in this space, and I'm going to just play my Commander H. Now, they're all really good cards here. I got a fantastic hand, but you have to play one. You have to say, I'm doing this one for my initiative. That's just that's just how it goes, and it's that kind of friction uh, as part of Undaunted as, this, as, as the system goes. So now that we're ready to go, we're going to flip our cards over. We're going to look at that. My number is four. His number is one. We are now going to take this disc, flip it over. This is going to be the LFA side, which is my side, and it becomes mine. Now this card that you just used goes into your discard pile. So I'm going to make Lewis's discard pile here. I'm going to make mine down here. And your active cards don't go in there. This is going to be your play area. And you have to make sure you keep those separate. But I'm going to go now. This is my turn. And I think I'm just going to do, I'm going to play my, my core sec. Now, here's what you get to do with these. Um, so right now, I can move my core sec Y, which is this unit right here. And I am going to move that disc one space right here, as long as it's scouted. And right now, this space right here is scouted. And I think I want to move him down into that space. But I could choose to control. And that means if I've got a location that I have scouted, which is this symbol right here, I can flip it over and say I want to control that space. And if I control this space, I'm going to get one more of my points towards my seven objective points. I can attack one uh, for one die, um, or I can attack, and this is a mech symbol. If it's filled in, it's a personnel, which is a disc. And if it's got the double outline symbol, it means that it's going to be a, a mech unit that's on a standee and you have to be in the same space with them, which is really hard to do when you still just get one die. So I'm going to put this card right here because I used it, but it's still in my play area. Now I have laid my mechs down. They stand up like this. They're not like, if you lay them down, they're not um, like suppressed. They're not tired or anything like that. Um, whenever they become suppressed, you add this red disc to their base. So it'll be very obvious if my units are suppressed or not. I'm just laying them down so that you can actually see them. Uh, otherwise, my camera will not catch uh, what this particular unit is, is my V Vulcan unit. Okay, so now I need to bolster. I'm going to do that. And this means I'm bolstering Z. Again, I can't inspire because I have not played a Z card to take it back into my hand to then play again, which is a really, really strong action. So I'm going to do two cards and they have to be Zs. So let's do the Stalker for sure. And the reason I need this Z Stalker is because this Stalker can scout and they can scout two spaces, one, two, all along the way. And I need I need this stalker to come out here and scout to this space and maybe scout across the bridge so that I can get my Hades out there, um, which is fantastic. Attack is really strong. I only have two stalker cards in my deck, period. I had one that I started with and now I get to add my second one. And now it looks like I'm gonna add another Z, um, like my corpse sec Z. So fantastic, fantastic. So that's gonna be two cards that I bolster. Now I'm going to play my last card, which is Commander V. This is Tally Stroud, and you'll see, again, you've got fantastic, um, like, their, their pictures that you get when you join the um, LFA. You've also got their code number, um, fantastic image there, their name, right, and then all of their different actions. And you only get to do one of them. So do I move? Do I attack? We haven't talked about suppress, but we'll get to a point where we want to suppress. And generally, with four dice you're likely to get a success depending on how far away you are. Um, but I want to bolster. I'm going to get just a couple more cards into my hand. And I did sacrifice that other card. What was it? My, um, yeah, my commander, which would have let me bolster. So I'm going to bolster two V. 
So I'm going to look up here. These are cards that I don't begin with. I have two navigators and two gunners, and I'm going to take one of each. Now these V cards are going to have different actions, but they all are associated with my V Vulcan mech who has a five defense naturally and is in a space that has plus two defense. So right now my Vulcan is pretty safe and my gunner is going to allow me to attack and suppress, which is definitely an aggressive card. That's what gunners do. And then the navigator is going to scout and recon, which helps get rid of interference and of course scouts a space. So that's what navigators are gonna do. So I've got these two cards. I add them to my discard pile. Now I have played all of my cards from my hand. I take those cards and I pop them into my discard pile. Done. So now my turn is done and we're gonna go over here to Lewis. Um, again, he's got his interference card over here. We're gonna take a look at what his cards do. He's got that supervisor. I told you for a fact, he's going to want to bolster. The other action that supervisors give you is command. And if you ever see command with any number behind it, you get to draw that many number of cards from the top of your deck and play them as normal. So instead of just playing three cards, you're going to get two more cards. Of course, one of the three you played was to get two more, but it's a really, really strong uh, card. So let's have him play this down here and he's going to bolster. Now his hewer and his blaster, I'm just gonna lay down right here, are going to be these two units and they're gonna be doing stuff. So let's just see what else we can bolster. There are gonna be uh, A's, we have our scanner, blaster, hewer, and then we've got ripper, nail gunner, and survey tech. And we've got those guys over here for our C units, his A units are over here. He wants to be able to do his scout. So I think he wants to get survey tech and I think he wants to get scanner. This is gonna help with getting out there and then um, identifying those locations so that he can move into maybe this space. He can maybe see, he just saw that I'm trying to make a break for it over here. And so he wants to get over here. So he's gonna grab these two and then he's also going to get one more Maybe he wants, because if it's over here on this side, he wants to add another card that will allow him to attack. And this blaster is really, really powerful. You'll see here that this actually targets a space, not just a unit. And so blasters are incredibly, incredibly uh, powerful. So there are his three bolster cards. We just put those straight into the discard pile. And now he's gonna look at his hewer and his blaster. So let's do, um, they can move, um, each of them can move. This can control attack and then attack in the same space. So the hewer, while he's very, very strong, um, it can't, can't do his really good attack unless he's in the same space with you. I think our hewer is going to move. So let's play that card down here and we'll take hewer. Now is hewer going to go down here and match my movement with a movement that's similar? Are they going to race here and see who has initiative next turn to get into that space first? Doesn't mean that first person there wins, but I think that having that defense is going to be helpful. Um, or does he take his hewer and move this direction and then come back here to see if he can nab up this space and lock it down, especially with the control marker? I think he wants to match me. I think he wants to come and meet me. And then he's going to play his blaster. And his blaster can move one as well. And perhaps he wants to move out into this space, even though it's undefended, because he could either fight this direction. He can also move this direction. He can fight over here by getting to a more central location. His attack does do, wow, two, he has to be two away. That's really, really good. And I think he doesn't want to be on a lower level. We haven't talked about levels yet or heights or elevations, but let's send his blaster over here for a move one. And the reason those folks were able to move, he's going to discard those cards, is because they've been previously scouted. And these are marked on the board and you just put those markers down on those spaces. Um, so they were able to move into those because they're scouted. Otherwise, you're not allowed to move, let's say here, into this space until you scout it. Okay, we're done. We did our very first round. And that is it. We are just simply going to draw four more cards and we will do the same uh, steps. We're going to do our initiative card. 
I get to go first, so I'm going to look at my cards first, and then we'll look at Lewis's cards next. So I'm taking a look at mine. What am I doing? Interference. Fantastic. Well, I got my captain. Um, his was a commander, I believe. Mine is Captain Syaro Wagner, um, and I can do the bolster, and I can do the command as well. Playing my interference card is not the best move right now. And of course I got my stalker. You know what? I think what I'm going to do is keep my stalker and keep my interference card so that I can do recon. Get rid of this interference and then draw a new card to my hand. But boy, do I want to do this. I want, I want to scout. If I scouted with two, I would go one, two, and I'd be in that space, and I'd have the defense, and I'd also have that scouted. I could move one, two, um, but these are already scouted. If it's in any um, lower level or bridge level, it's fully scouted, so I wouldn't be gaining anything with that move. But gosh darn it, if I don't want, I'm, mi I'm missing out on my Y. If I don't bolster with my Y at this time, I'm not gonna get those units into my hand, and I think I might be almost going through my deck at this point. Yeah, I'm going to have to shuffle my deck and then I won't have those units in there. I'm probably not going to be able to do anything over here unless I draw my corpse deck. So I will choose my sergeant. I, I don't know if this is the right decision, but I'm going to play. I'm going to just do this. And that's simply because I like my other three cards so, so well. And Lewis is going to do the same thing over here. He's looking at his cards. Dang! Dang! Squad leader. Scanner. He's going to bolster or guide or inspire. He's going to, with the scanner, scout, recon, attack. Squad leader, see and survey. He's going to start moving his survey tech. But he did get two squad leaders. So he's really got to figure out which one of these does he not get to play with. And that's honestly, ugh because they're really, really good cards. So he bolsters too much. He can't do any recon. Um, he can do scout with scanner A and he can, oh, he can scout his way to this space. So he has to keep his scanner A. Otherwise this hewer can't even get into this space and even my, my corpse set can't even get in there. I mean, I'm standing there in the basement at a disadvantage, just hoping that I can get across Boy, was that an early an early uh, error. Um, I mean, I, my stalker Y could show up and then he could hop down and get in there, but I don't have that plan just yet. So survey tech, C, what do you want to do? Scout, maybe, probably not. Attack, nope, in the same space. Recon, let's have him do this. We're going to do, we're going to have him say survey tech C is going to be his uh, initiative card. So there's his initiative. Those are both of ours. He's going to keep these cards like this. And then we're going to flip over. And I already forgot which one I did. Oh, nice. Okay, so he played a six. I played a seven. So I'm going to keep that initiative marker. And then I'm going to go first. So let's do the cool move. I'm going to say I'd like to recon. I'm going to play this, my stalker, as my recon instead of my scout or instead of the attack. Stalkers are amazing, I think. So I'm going to play this as a recon. I play that down into my play area and I discard my interference. And I discard this out of the game. I'm going to put this card all the way over here. I'm just going to make a little pile on that side. And then when you do that, when you recon, you draw from the top of your deck and you add the card to your hand. And I got Stalker Y. No way. <laughs> okay, so way exciting. It doesn't mean I can get my corpse deck over there, but yeah, this is going to be uh, good. So let's do, oh, maybe I should do my, oh, instead of bolster, I should do command and keep playing. And maybe, oh, maybe I can actually do it. Ooh, 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 let's do it. This is going to be good. I need to save this unit. I, I, I don't, I need to get those cards into my deck. Oh, I need to get the cards into my deck. Okay. So let's play stalker Y and I want stalker to go scout, scout, two steps, up to two steps. And if you are, have already scouted the place, you're fine. If you haven't, you take one of the discs that matches your uh, player color and your symbol. And I'm going to say it's been scouted. And for every place that you have scouted anew or fresh, you take an interference card 
and you place that into your discard pile. So the one I just got rid of, I immediately replaced with the new one. So I still have two in my hand. So now here's the real question. Do I bolster or do I command? I'm looking at my cards over here. I only have one Corpsec Y card in my hand and he's right there and he's in a really vulnerable position being at a lower elevation and being so close to getting up there with my stalker. And the Corpsec also does control, which is what I want to do with this particular uh, token. So do I get more of the units I need with Bolster or do I command from my deck and draw my last two cards of my hand and play them. <sighs> I did a good push. I did Stalker has great defense of six plus one is seven. That's a really hard roll to make. Um, oh man, this is rough. I, 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 I'm gonna just play me. I'm gonna play aggressive. I'm gonna play fast. I wanna do, I wanna command. I'm gonna play my card down and I'm gonna draw the top two cards. Like I said, Lewis is always gaining more and more units and really solidifying the fact that it's going to be hard for me to neutralize his units because there are so many cards I have to essentially shoot down before I neutralize them. I'm playing a little, a little faster and a little looser here. Okay, so I got an interference card, which is not going to be helpful because I'm not able to do a recon. The card I drew that paired with it was my Corpse XZ. So I think I'm going to simply move with this unit. Um, the problem is I'm going to move them out of safety of a plus two and I'm going to move them over here into just a space that doesn't have any defense. But it gets me one step closer to taking this space and if I get my stalker over there, which I sacrificed the opportunity to earlier, I can gain control of that space. The interference unfortunately just stays in my deck and you're never allowed to discard it um, out of the deck unless you do the recon action. So that's it, that's the end of my turn. I'm gonna put my deck here and I'm not gonna shuffle just yet um, until I need to draw a card. And we're gonna look at Lewis. Okay, so he's got these guys. We were doing something over here. His scanner, yep, his scanner, um, Jarko Kleinthenes here. <laughs> Um, is going to scout two, and there's no need to do recon, and there's a, a good reason to attack. We haven't attacked yet. We're going to attack here in a minute, and we're going to get really close to each other. So he's going to play scanner, and he's going to move him two spaces. One, free space, no scout. Two, now he's in the same space as my stalker. He takes this, and now we both have scouted out that location, and yes, he does add that one interference card to his discard pile. Can he move? Can he move? Oh, maybe he should attack my stalker. Again, that's a really hard attack. So if you play, I've talked about Inspire. It says Inspire 1A. What you do is you look at a card in your play area, and if it has the letter that it says, um, then you can bring that card back into your hand by playing this. You're inspiring the scanner to essentially go again. And then you can choose any of the actions, not just the one that you did when you played them the first time. So I could then attack with scanner to stalker or, oof, even more powerful, scanner down to the corpse sec, down on the ground, which that might be a really, really good option. I mean, getting some more hewer cards and bolstering would be fantastic. We haven't necessarily talked about Guide just yet um, and Pathfind. So Pathfind and Guide are ways to mobilize your units without using the scout action. Um, and it doesn't allow you to scout, it just allows you to move those units because squad leaders are essentially really, really powerful um, in that sense. So this is going to be my uh, his A and then his C. So let's, let's do it. I'm going to play this as Inspire and then bring this card back up into his hand, and now he's going to play Scanner A as a one attack. And Scanner is gonna say, hey, I see that really vulnerable uh, corpse sec down here. I don't wanna go after Stalker. This is essentially the new update for the Undaunted 2200. You'll see up here, dice. I've got eight siders, 10 siders, and 12 siders. And so when you are fighting someone on the same level, you will use a 10 sider. So if my, this scanner came up and fought my stalker, 
it would be one plus six is seven. On a D10, they have to roll a seven, eight, or nine, or 10 to hit. So it's equal to the number or um, higher. No automatic hits for tens, just any number of your rolls have to be the number or higher. Now, if you're going down, you get to look at their number, which is four. You count how many spaces away they are, so that would be five. And now he gets to roll eh, one die, because it says attack one, and you roll the d12. So Lewis is going to say, my scanner is going to attack your corpse sec down there in the basement. You're one step away and you have a four defense naturally. Let's see what happens. Um, he needs a five on this. Oh no, he rolled a two. Oh, well, I'm happy. <laughs> He's not. So yeah, he rolled a two. That was not a success. Had it been a success, Lewis would have to take, or sorry, I would have to take one of those units first out of my hand. So that's why initiative also matters. You would lose that unit from your hand as an action, but also as a card forever. Then you go to your deck and you look through your deck, uh, sorry, your discard pile, and then you go to your deck last. So that's the order of sequence. So you'd be losing a card um, if you have a success roll again. Any amount of success is just one success. Wow, that was disappointing for him. Squad Leader C, let's have him do the Pathfind. Now, Pathfind is a way to scout without moving your unit. And I know I mentioned earlier that um, guiding moves your units but doesn't scout them. So let's do Pathfind. It says 2C, so we look at our Squad Leader, we look at the designated C, and so we can do any of those three, but they're all in the same space. And they can scout in a contiguous line up to two spaces away from the selected unit. So I want him to be able to get here, and he can pick any of the C's and go here and then here. So he's going to do this, and much like scouting, he's going to take an interference for each of those spaces that was a brand new scout. So that's going to be what he's doing with his squad leader. C takes these cards, puts them over there. Okay, so let's shuffle up. Um, it looks like Lewis is going to have three cards, and then I am going to have my whole deck, and I'm going to shuffle them up, and I'm going to draw my cards, and we're just going to go again. Boy, his first attack was not successful, and he had the advantage of going from high to low, which great. I mean, having him try to fight up, it's like five, six, seven, a seven on, uh, or an eight on an eight-sider, because that's going uh, from low to high, same to same, and then high to low. Oof, that's, that's rough. So I don't think he's going to be fighting with that. You know, I sure would, I got to get this guy up there. I just got to get him up there. Okay, please, please be great. Let's do this. He needs one more card, so we're going to shuffle this up. I think he's got a lot of interference in here. He wasn't able to recon, and he added uh, several uh, this last turn, but he did bolster a little bit more than I did. So he's got a couple more units than I do. So here's that. There's the decks. Um, I have initiative, so I'm going to take a look at my cards. Nice! I got my gunner for my V. So my Vulcan can gunner. He can attack and suppress. Maybe I should suppress the scanner. He's one, two away. Five, one, two, seven, eight. Oof, with four dice though at the same level, that's not bad. My stalker Y is over here. They can go after them or go after the hewer in the ground. My captain bolsters and commands. And then my corpse Z can't move into here without, I'm gonna use them as my initiative. I'm going to do five as my initiative because he can't move into here without it being scouted. And attacking is so far away at this point. It would be one, two, three, four, plus four. Uh, it, it, that's too many. That's too many far away. So let's, let's have that. I'm going to play that as my initiative. Pretty fast. Sometimes you really just have everything just go. You're like, this is it. Oh, he got his supervisor. He got his Sea Ripper right here. Um, that, that moves, attacks, controls. He got his nail gunner. Um, oh boy. Moves, attacks, suppresses at a really, really high rate. Do any of them have recon? No! So he got this interference card 
and he can't recon. I would have chosen any card uh, to, to discard that would allow him to um, get rid of that interference. It starts to clog up your deck and you just don't get to do anything with that card. And because of that, I think he essentially sees I'm moving and doing C things or I'm bolstering and commanding and I just don't get to go first this turn. He's gonna lose tie. So even if I played a one, he plays the one, I'm gonna win the tie. I think he just knows I'm going last this round no matter what. So he's willing to sacrifice that because he can't get rid of that card. And I go, well, I lost my whole Corpse XZ unit. So discard pile for him. Um, discard pile for me is down here. And then I'm gonna look at my cards and let's go. Let's do this. So my Stalker and my Gunner are gonna go after these units and maybe I can do some suppression, maybe I can do some really, really cool stuff. My Stalker can also, oh yes, oh wait. I think my Stalker might scout. Check this out. It's gonna add a lot of interference to my deck, but my Stalker is gonna sneak around and go to their home base that they have control of and do a scout. Watch this, watch this. Okay, so I do scout. I say walker, a stalker Y goes walk, walk, and I have to add, I go one, two, oh boy, lots of interference, but it's gonna be a while before I shuffle my deck, so I'm not gonna really feel that interference just yet. And now I have scouted all the way around here and I'm in this space that has a two control marker. So yeah, I was fighting over this one, but now it's been scouted. He just needs to get in there. I need to get him in there. So am I gonna pass my bolster up again and do command? I can't, I need to get more units. I gotta get more Y units in there. I just have to, I mean, and, and, and I might lose them right away if he attacks me, but I think I gotta do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bolster three cards. I need a corpse sec Y, gotta get this guy in there. What else do I need? Um, my Stalker Y, yes, because I'm moving my Stalker Y and it's just been one card every time and I just happen to get them two times to walk and then to walk. So I've got two of those in there. They're two Ys. Who else do I need to get? Who else do I need? I've got three of those guys. I've got three of those guys. I think my I think my Corpsec Y is just like un, under, under attack. I'm really, really concerned about making sure that they're doing okay. So I'm just gonna add that in there again. Yes, I'm a little bit more, you know, I got more padding. And now my gunner, uh, do I attack or do I suppress? Now, this is the amount of dice that I get. So I'm gonna add up my distance and really what their defense is and see which would make the best decision. So Vulcan here is my gunner. I haven't used my mech yet. I haven't moved them because I haven't gotten my navigator. I would move into this space. Uh, would, would get me closer to moving and getting across the bridge because these guys really need to mobilize and they're so slow. They're so hard to move. And they don't go into these spaces where it says no max. So I am one, two away, plus a defense, plus the scanner. So he's at eight and it's the same level. You'll see we're both on platforms. It's the same level. So I'm gonna go with suppress. I think that taking four dice that are D10s is going to give me a higher probability of hitting and suppression is a pretty strong move. I wish I could get that hewer. Maybe I should go after the hewer. That would be one, two, three, plus that's four and it would be a seven to hit. There's no defense in here. And it'd be going top down, so I'd be going from platform to basement. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that. I, my scanner's already kind of done their job, and the hewer is more vulnerable, just like my corpse sec was. So again, one, two, three spaces, plus the four is seven, going down. I'm gonna suppress still. It, yeah, I could roll two and try to get a seven to a 12, which is pretty good. But I don't know if I'm gonna get it. I'm just gonna suppress the hewer. Okay, suppress, let's see here. It's kind of, you have to, you turn their disc over. Please, please, please. Okay, here we go. Ah, I got one, I got two successes. I got a nine and I got a 10, but it just counts because I got it. 
So I had a one, a six, a nine, and a 10. So that was successful on a suppress and you will flip their disc over. And what this means is the hewer is going to, uh, Lewis is gonna have to use his hewer A card to just unsuppress it. He will be playing his card as that. The, the, you don't get to actually activate the unit. You have to turn them over to make them active again. So successful suppress. And that is my deck. So I'm gonna put those in my discard pile. And now it's gonna be him. So what is he gonna do? He's got supervisor and he's got the nail gunner and the ripper. So maybe these folks should move out. There's move, attack and suppress, move, attack and control. Oh, well we want the ripper, let's do this. We need that ripper to be able to go over and control this space. We know the blaster was gonna move over there, but does the blaster control? No, the blaster doesn't control. So I'm assuming this blaster is gonna come down this bridge or come down this bridge if they can scout it. So let's just say Ripper is going to, into the play area, is going to move one. Done, Ripper C is moved. Because if we can move them again and then get them here, Lewis can take control of that space. <sighs> Command or bolster? I think he needs to bolster some more cards. He's got a lot of interference. And if I can have him add in the cards that do recon, he can get the pairing with the recons and the interference cards, I believe. Then again, it's gonna be in his discard pile and he's got all these cards to get through. So maybe it'll line up. Okay, so we're gonna do, sorry, here into play area and let's have him bolster. We're gonna do one of each of the two cards that say recon, one, two, and then the last card, he's got this stuff. He's got the Hewer. He was worried about Hewer A. I did not attack to take out a unit, but he's getting nervous. He's getting scared. He saw how dangerous my Vulcan was at shooting all the way across to that space over there. And so he's like, I gotta get that done. All right, lastly, Nail Gunner. Move, attack, or suppress. Nail Gunner needs to get out there and look at this. Look at this space, plus two defense. Why is he not there? Boom. There is no minus the space here plus two. There's very little space where you have defense. This is a fantastic defensive position to protect this home base here from people crossing mechs, you know, my Hades, crossing the bridge and getting over there. So that was a move one. He's mobilizing. He is mobilizing and I'm still really slow. I'm, I'm slow getting out. LFA generally is pretty slow with that. All right, we're gonna draw some new cards. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Um, one, two, three, four. And it looks like I still have initiative. So we are going to take a look at my cards. Oh no, oh no, no. Look at these cards. I got Corpse XZ and Commander, no recon, no recon. And I have a hand of interference. So I, I'm playing an interference card and I just don't get to go first. This guy is going to maybe attack across the bridge, but that defense is really, really intimidating. My commander V is going to hopefully move this unit. Uh, then again, attacking and suppressing over here and just staying in that spot is really good. Well, that's just going to be, I mean, what a rip. It would have been nice to have gotten rid of one of those cards. Oh no! <laughs> okay, so here's a good one. This is this is good. He got a scanner that does recon. He has two interference cards. He's going to be able to get rid of one of them. And I don't want him to sacrifice his big seven squad leader to bolster or inspire or pathfind. So he's going to do this knowing he's not going to win that tie. But he knows he's going to be able to get rid of this guy, which is, again, you know, it's, it's a good... It's a good step, it's a step in the right direction. So we flip over, we compare. Okay, so tie, that means that it's gonna stay with me. Let's go, let's do this. Um, this is bad, I'm just gonna play that interference down and get it out of my hand so I don't look at it anymore. So is this guy, is he gonna move out onto the bridge and just be almost defenseless without any support, but put the pressure on Nail Gunner to not move into this space, maybe, because it's defensive, it's a really good place to be. Is he gonna go over here? Is he just gonna simply attack? I think he needs to be able to move and control. <sighs> yeah, 
He needs to be able to stay in the corner. I kind of need him to do this first and then I can do it. So I'm just going to do an attack. I'm going to do this attack. And so we're going to play this card down. Oh, my card down here. And it's going to be one, two, three, four, plus four is eight. And we are on the same level. So I'm going to roll here. I'm going to roll one D10 <laughs> and try to get an eight, nine or 10. I just don't feel like I have many other, any, many options for this guy. I'm really just trying to mobilize him. So let's do it. I'm going to roll that and we'll see five. Didn't do it. Didn't make it. Um, but that's okay. I'm, I'm trying here. You know, it would have been nice to get that, but it, the odds were not in my favor. Commander V Vulcan, is he going to move out of some safety with defense? Is he going to try to suppress now the scanner or attack the scanner or bolster and get the other two cards in the deck, one of which is a recon card and a scout card. The other is yet again another gunner, which gunners are amazing. Or do I just get over here so that I can move out here and actually put some pressure on him? This is hard. This is so challenging. Last time I was able to get that hewer and that just felt so good to suppress that hewer. Okay, I think I'm gonna move him. I wanna move Vulcan out. I wanna get Vulcan going. Maybe I can come at this blaster. I'm leaving my base a little vulnerable, but there is this one unit here in between. But if Scanner just walks over here, they can do the same thing I did over here. Oh, okay, I don't wanna move. I don't wanna move. I just don't wanna do it. I am going to suppress Scanner, or maybe I should do the attack on Hewer because I have the advantage. Maybe he has a Hewer card in here. Okay, so it's one, two, three is seven. I'm gonna roll two dice this time. These are the same level. We're at the same, so we're gonna do the D10 and I'm gonna attack for two dice. And I need a seven. Seven! Okay, so he has to start with his hand first, then he goes to his discard pile. If it's not there, then he goes to his deck. So does he have Hewer A? He doesn't have Hewer A, so we're gonna come here. We're gonna look in here. Does he have Hewer A? He does. So he takes this unit and he um, says, goodbye, Yakone. You served the breakers well, and you put this unit into your your discard pile. This is your, your I say your discard pile, your, your, your dead pile. It's not your discard pile. And it's, it's just out of the game forever. You can always look at your own pile of uh, removed units that your opponent attacked and killed, um, but I can never look at it as the opponent. So that was unfortunate. Wow, that was really successful. Good job, Vulcan. I'm glad I changed my mind. Cards go into the discard pile. And now we're going to look at what Lewis is up to. He's got that interference card, but he's got the scanner. So he's going to play down scanner and say, I want to recon this out of my hand and then draw a new card. <laughs> and it's an interference card. So rats. Okay, that's done. So now we've got squad leader C, and this is bolster, inspire, or pathfind. So let's maybe pathfind, and he can continue to scout out new locations. I mean, the interference is getting really thick, but then it also helps him mobilize. And that's kind of my weakness as the LFA is mobilization, and he's really good at doing that. Now, he can't inspire, he didn't play a C unit, but he could bolster some more of these units. Boy, the Ripper and the Gunner, those are really, really good attacks. And the Ripper is the only way that he can attack my mechs, because you can only attack mechs with this symbol, which is the double outline, as opposed to personnel, which is this uh, full, filled-in white hex. So maybe he just wants to get more cards in his hand. And I know that that's what he wants to do. I told you, Lewis loves to bolster. So instead of pathfinding, let's have him bolster two Cs and we'll have him get a nail gunner and a ripper. And we're gonna just pop those right into his deck. And then this is gonna go into the discard pile. And we are now ready to start yet again another round. So let's deal out the cards. One, two, three, four, those are mine. I'm gonna start 
He's going to grab his form and he's going to start. I can't even, I know I haven't even moved those mechs yet. Okay, so I've got a navigator. It's going to allow me to scout with my V. And then I've got Sergeant Y, which lets me bolster or inspire. And if I move, of course, I'm okay. Yes. Okay, so, okay. Ugh, ugh. Okay, so I'm going to play Corpse Sec and I'm going to move into this space because my stalker already scouted it. Then I'm going to use my Y and I'm going to inspire that same unit to act again. So I know I need these two cards. Keep, keep, keep. So which card am I going to use for my initiative? Because, oh, I can't control with the enemy unit there. So, ah, maybe, I mean, keeping this navigator for recon, if I'd gotten in, um, uh, my, my interference card would have been great, but I didn't. Sergeant Z bolster or inspire my Z units. <sighs> my Z units. I've got a couple more of those guys. Dang. Dang. Uh, okay, I'm going to use my navigator. My three is my, um, is my initiative. Let's hope that it works. All right. Oh, he's got a good hand. Wow. He's got scanner A, hewer A, blaster A. Look at these. So he's got to keep this hewer so that he can turn him back over. Essentially, the suppression means you sit, sacrifice your whole card to just flip them back over. Scanner is going to scout or attack. He doesn't need to recon, but he wants to use them. And then squad leader A. He can inspire somebody to do the same thing again. Oh, but if Scanner A walks, maybe he wants to walk over here and just scout. Then he can be in the same space as my Vulcan, but he can't fight. He can't fight my Vulcan. Oh man, this is rough. What's he gonna do? How's he gonna do this? His hewer is the one that needs to be over here with the Vulcan. And since I'm not moving my Vulcan, he kind of has to come to me. He's got A, he's got A to inspire or bolster. Ugh. Guide? Ugh. Okay. 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 Which card is he going to do? Which card is he going to do? He doesn't want to lose these cards. He wants to keep his hewer. I think he has to keep his scanner. And then he's got a... His blaster can do a two-spot attack. I think he wants to blast... I think he wants to blast my corpse sec. But if he does that, then it's like the squad leader. Oddly enough, is the... <laughs> It's not the least important. He's just not the least important. He's just not. So maybe attacking and then going after my corpse Y. Oh my god, that's devastating. Okay. I'm going to have him do that because I think he did pull something like that on me and I didn't even see it coming because I've just left this guy down in the basement for so long. So let's actually have him do... Um... He's got to, he's got to pop the, he's the only one he can't do is the scanner. So he's going to put this guy as his initiative. I think he's got to revive his hewer um, so that he can move him next time. So we flip our cards over and we go, oh no, three to six. So this is bad for me. He's going to get the initiative and he's going to start by um, ruining my life. So he's going to play his blaster and he's going to attack. Now, this is gonna be a space, and it's everybody in that space. You will roll separately for them, but you get to attack everybody within two spaces away, and that's the uh, symbol for uh, that, that uh, location tile, like, like your space as opposed to just one unit. So he does get two dice, and he's going from a platform down into the basement, which is down. So he gets two D12s and he needs to go one, two, he needs a six to a 12 on one of these dice and his blaster will attack my corpse sec. Why? So six. And <laughs> I mean, it's just devastating. So if there were any other units there, you would roll for them. I Again, like you would roll each individual um, unit. Um, boy, so I look in my hand and I go, 
no, I was going to inspire my Corsac Y to move and then be in the space. And so I say bye-bye, Rika, Vaccaro, forever. They are gone, gone for good. Let's let's keep our little pile right here. I'll put them side by side. They're, the backs are different. Um, absolutely, absolutely devastating. And then we will do squad leaders going to inspire 1A to come back into your hand and he's going to do the same thing again. Oh my gosh, I'm going to attack and do the corp sec Y, one, two from high to low, and I lose again. So a 10 is a success, the three, it doesn't matter. I look in my hand and I do not have my corpse at Y. I come here into my discard pile and I look for that and I find them right here. Um, Ogina, so Cathane, gone forever. I am really, this is bad. This is seriously bad, so. Devastating, um, fantastic play, great initiative grab, and he's going to then play his Hewer, and his Hewer is going to unsuppress. That's all you can do when you play your card down as that card. So now his unit is active again, and he can move them and uh, act with them with a future card. Now, I have only two cards left, and that means I have to bolster 2Y instead of inspiring, because I can't inspire someone who just died in front of my eyes. So I'm going to take the only two left is here. My sergeant says, hey, <laughs> hey, you two, come, come, you gotta get in here. And then I've got Sergeant Z and I can either bolster or inspire. And yeah, I just need to bolster my Zs. So I'm taking two of these and I'm going to bolster those two units. And now I've got a nice healthy hand after, boy, just a real devastating uh, round. All right, so we will continue playing like this until one player, and this is immediate, this is a sudden death ending, and one player controls seven objective points or neutralizes three opposing units. And if, for some reason, I go through my deck, I go through my hands and I can't find a corpse sec Y. I go through my discard pile, can't find a corpse sec Y, go through my deck and I can't find one. That's when this unit will come off the board and go to the opponent and that is one neutralized unit. So when you, it says three, this would count as one of those uh, three units. Now again, I've got two plus two. I'm working my way to getting to five. I'm over here now, if I could control this space, it'd be six, seven, and I wouldn't even need to get this space over here, and that's really what I'm going for with my seven objective points, despite having corp uh, corpse Y just maybe distracting, maybe that's really what's going on here with my, uh, with my choices. So we will keep playing until we, uh, one of us um, wins the game by completing one of those win conditions. All right, everybody, stay tuned right now in this video for my final thoughts. Kimberly here with my final thoughts on Undaunted 2200 Callisto. This is a two player game or you'd like to play solo, you wanna play with four, there are rules for that in this game. There's a way to play this with one or four, but I'm gonna talk more about that two player back and forth tactical combat here because that to me is the way that I play Undaunted and I feel like this has those two factions that really makes for a juicy strategy game that I thoroughly enjoy. So yes, I am coming from playing previous Undaunted and thoroughly enjoying those. And I really want to talk about what um, 2200 Callisto offers that might be a little bit different and what's going on in this particular game or iteration of Undaunted. So players are going to be playing one of the two factions in the game. There's the LFA, which is the Lunar Frontier Authority, and then there's the Breakers. And their decks and their units are very different. That's one of the things about this game in general, Undaunted, is the asymmetrical uh, player decks, but also the way that the players will build their own deck as they continue playing the game by um, essentially bolstering troops 
from their supply into their active hand. Now there are eight scenarios in this game and every single scenario has a board. So there are four of these boards inside the game that you get. And on one side you've got, yes, here's essentially scenario three. And on the back you've got scenario four. And there are all of the, in for all the details and information here, in addition to being in the scenario book. Now, when you read the scenario book and you get your decks lined up and you figure out what all bits and pieces you need, it also has this really in-depth story that kind of walks you through this world, what the conflict is, what the current situation is providing for players and what the goals are. So it really has a lot of flavor. And it has a lot of story. So if you want to sit down and read that, it does take a little bit of time. Um, but what it does is lead you through these eight scenarios in just a really rich, lovely theme. Now, I love the science fiction aspect of this. I think that's one of the strengths. One of the things that all the previous Undaunteds had was history and past, and it just felt so much more grounded in, in reality. And that kind of added this, this, this kind of like weight to it, which I think is like really nice at one moment, but it's also really maybe too much and too heavy and too emotional at other moments. And what this does is it kind of lifts it and it takes it and puts it in the future it, on a moon and Jupiter, and the sci-fi element of it really helps with the flair and the theme and the cards and the artwork. And I think it just kind of like, just detaches it a little bit from maybe the previous Undaunted. So I think it does set itself apart in that way. And I do really appreciate that aspect or that element of it. So the decks are so different and, and really what you get with the LFA is a slower moving, it's not a fast, quick response. The LFA comes in and they've got these mechs early on that, that the other, uh, that the breakers don't have. They have different kinds of big units. And these mechs can do navigation, they can also do gunning. And really they just kind of like stomp around very slowly. And even other units don't have that much mobilization but they are essentially coming in and trying to destroy things and break buildings and, and like kind of like wreak havoc when there are asymmetrical goals in the scenarios. And over here, we've got the breakers and they're trying to like scout around and they are trying to like save prisoners and survivors. And it, it just seems like there's this survival aspect and, and they're faster moving and they can mobilize a lot easier and this kind of working together. Meanwhile, LFA just seems like this, you know, like mech unit that's kind of like slowly stomping towards their, their victory, um, possibly. But a lot of times the goals are very similar, where in, in this case, in the first two scenarios and the last two scenarios, they have the same, get this number of objective points or neutralize this number of units of the opposing um, uh, team or the opposing faction. And so really you're just mobilizing and trying to hold on to particular places but you get into each other's faces. You really have to, this is a face-to-face -face, like dirty combat situation here. Um, I, I found that it's just you're, you're in each other's business and it's wild. There's one really cool feature that they incorporated into this game and I did this because it's all about where you are in space. Are you at the same level as someone else? Well, if you're at the same level as someone else, you're gonna roll the D10. And so you have your D10 dice. And so if I am on a platform and somebody else is on a platform and I shoot at them, I first have to look at their defense. Do they have a natural defense? Let's say it's four. They're two, they're two spaces away. I add two. Do they have any defense in the space in which they're at? Let's say they have a one defense. So there's four plus two plus one, that's seven. I'm gonna roll the amount of dice that my card says inside the hex of attack. And if I roll that number or higher, so equal or higher, then I succeed. And they have to essentially remove that unit from their hand first. Then if they don't have it there, go to their uh, discard pile, then go to their deck. 
And so they're, they're removing that unit from possibly that actual turn, which is the most devastating in any Undaunted series. But the thing that's different about this is this is level, so you have a D10. If you've got um, one person shooting from a platform lower than where they are, um, they shoot the, D the D12. They have advantage. So now they have up to a 12 to hit. If someone is rolling low up high, then they have to roll the D8. And so your uh, probability of succeeding goes up or goes down or in the d10 stays exactly the same as a, a normal game and there are no automatic hits on tens um every everything is just either a success or not a success and if you succeed no matter how many times you roll a success it's just one success which is one of my favorite favorite things about this game is you either succeed or you don't and then you simply remove one. So one particular attack can't be more devastating than losing a unit. Now that person could attack again with another card that does the same thing and may inspire somebody to do it again and then you're like great <laughs> this is like the worst but the, the worst thing that can happen is just simply losing a unit which is hard. It's hard especially when it's out of your hand. So this game really offers a nice complexity with elevation or with levels of if you're above, equal to, or below someone. And I find that to be really, really cool because now it asks you to be incredibly tactical about your decisions. Where are you going? How are you mobilizing? And can you get somewhere before someone can take advantage of you when you're in um, a weak position or a vulnerable position as you're mobilizing? So it's just really, really thoughtful. So I think that this game offers a lot. I really, really enjoy it. I think the accessibility is challenging at times. So first thing is the rule book doesn't always answer all of your questions. So I will say right now, um, you'll need to use Board Game Geek forum and the Q&A to just clarify some of your questions. It might be about iconography that's not explained on the board, nor is it explained in the rule book or the scenario book. And it might be discrepancies in things that are written on the board and that are written in the rule book and the scenario book. For example, there were two errors on your very first board. So it's like your first scenario, your second scenario, You've got misprints <laughs> on and, and, and things that say some one thing in the book and one thing on the board, and you're 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 just a little confused and it slows you down and it makes you feel like maybe you're not playing it correctly. So I would say double check with Board Game Geek and just clarify those those errors because they are there and it does interfere with your ease of playing. Um, I would also say that setup is actually quite intensive considering they've done everything for you. I love these maps. I think these maps are fantastic. I like that we're not putting everything together ourselves, that we're not putting the tiles up, and that if you if you jog one, then all of a sudden the entire board goes like, you know, sideways and, and it gets a little weird. I know that there's this modular building of your own that comes with previous Undaunteds, but this means that everything has been thoroughly planned out and is thoughtful. And you can replay any scenario as many times as you want. And honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it gets old. It's not like I want to build my own map with these things. Plus, because these can draw the lines wherever they want, you have now non-hexes or non-squares where you have connections of spaces, like adjacent spaces and, and really interesting features that change the way that you're tactically moving around on the board. And I like that. Plus, they're able to print everything on the board so that whenever you put down your tiles, like your control markers or your scout markers, or you're putting down places like buildings and um, prisoners or things like that, pit traps, you see exactly, oh, it goes right here, it goes right there, it goes right there. And every space is going to tell you whether or not a mech can go there. And so it's nice to have it all done. It kind of reminds me of when they came out with Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, and they were like, hey, guess what? It's all in a spiral notebook. And you don't have to put together anything ever again. And it's all just here and it's pretty and it's glossy. And every scenario is just one of these things. And you're like, this is amazing. I really, really like that. 
but there's still stuff to set up. Like you open the map and that's like not done. You still have to put bits out on the board. You still have to get all of your units lined up. You still have to make sure you get your cards out. You have to make sure you get your deck set up with the right amount of cards. You just got to get a lot of stuff out still. So it takes a long time to set up and then to, to, to put back in the box. Um, but I do think the maps are a very thoughtful and smart choice. I just wish they had done a little bit more proofing to make sure that every single rule and every single situation was in the rule book for clarity and that there were no mistakes on the printing um, for for the, the boards and for the scenario rule book because that just to me seems like it feels rushed and I, I think that there's been so much thought and consideration put into this. And I think that the art and the sci-fi theme here is dynamite. I really like it. Um, and, and I just, th th there's just, again, so much to like here. Sometimes the spaces can get really crowded with a lot of figures and you actually can't fit them all in there. Maybe if these discs were just a bit smaller because you can still see what everything is. I mean, the mechs in these pieces are massive. I mean, there's this, there's a drill that the uh, um, breakers get to have. I mean, is this necessary? Th th this is huge. This is massive. I don't know if it's necessary for this drill to be so big and kind of top heavy actually, but um, cool, very cool, um, especially what the drill does. But anyway, I, I think there's just, again, a lot to like here. I think it has a couple new features that are really fun. And I just am a big fan. So this is back to my final, final thought. I'm just a fan of Undaunted. It makes me feel. It makes me feel before I play it, while I'm playing it, after I'm playing it. It sticks with me. It stays. I think the system of resolving attacks and suppression is really good. I like it. Um, I love building my deck. I, I just really enjoy this, especially when those turns go really fast. You draw four cards and then you pick one for initiative and then you get to play your other three for hopefully without someone taking one of your units out from your hand. It's clean, it's fun, it just it's really nice. And I think these eight scenarios just give you a different feel every time while adding maybe another element or another bit of complexity. And I love it when they have a variety of goals, especially different goals, like the breakers are doing this, and the LFA is doing this, and whoever can do that first wins the game. Just a really thoughtful system. I like what um, 2200 Callisto is doing, but I do feel like they could have done uh, a little better with a couple elements, components, and uh, um, like just ease of playing. I think they could have done, done a little bit more work there. Okay, that's going to be it for me this time. I'll see you later, folks.